Hello and welcome to another edition of Ask the AD. Lots of good questions and topics to get to on this week's show or this month's show. I'm Brian Smoller along with the Director of Athletics, Gene Taylor. Glad you could join us. And we'll start first with, uh, I know a project that you were on last year, the CFP Committee. I know it takes up a lot of time, but it sure sounds like it's a, a lot of fun. What can you tell us about being on the CFP? What's it like without getting, I know you can't reveal all the secrets, but uh, just give us a little bit of the background of what it's, it's like. Brian, it is literally one of the most uh, enjoyable things that I've done in my career, and I've had an opportunity to do a lot of good things. There are 13 members, voting members on the committee, and they're made up of athletic directors, former coaches, football players, uh, and it is unbelievably impressive the amount of knowledge that sits on that committee. Um, it's a tremendous process. We go six weeks. We just started our first week, so we have five more weeks all the way through the you know, conference championship weekend. And every week, our job is to come up with the best 25 in the country that we think is the best 25. And we have a lot of information in front of us. We have a lot of data. We have a lot of um, information from what we see in terms of, we also watch conferences. I have the ACC and the Conference USA. Each member has two conferences. And then we sit in a room and we discuss everything we think we know about a particular team. We don't really look at conferences. We don't, you know, support a certain conference. We just say, hey, this is what the conference feels. And then if they talk about K-State, I have to leave the room. I'm not allowed to advocate for us as a school. Whatever they talk about, I come in, I see where we're listed, and I sit down and we move on to the next round of vote. There are multiple rounds of voting both days. And uh, it's it's an unbelievably detailed process with a lot of great conversation. Yeah, you know, it sounds like a, a an interesting interesting fly on the wall if, if someone could be there to, to yeah. see how it's all done. I know it's not without its own measure of controversy. How often, <laughs> once people find out that you're on the committee, how often do you get asked, why is this team here? I get asked, you know, pretty regularly. I've even got a few random emails. Last year, there was a couple of Cincinnati fans that found out <laughs> we were on the committee. Um, but really, it's it's the chair that, you know, has the most visible spot. This year, it's Boo Corrigan from North Carolina State. He does a great job. Last year, of course, was my friend Gary Barta. Um, but the integrity of the people in that room is so high, and they care about college football, and they know the importance. One of the gentlemen I sit next to is the AD at Michigan. And right before we started voting, they go through, pra you know, they go through practice rounds as a new member. And he looked at me and he said, wow, this vote really means something this time. I said, yeah, it feels a little different, doesn't it? So it does. They take a lot of great, they take great pride in the process. You're a better man than me because I think if I walked back in the room and saw K-State ranked at a certain <laughs> spot, I'd have some sort of snide <laughs> comment to throw up at, at everybody. But So in, in the world of college athletics, in addition to the CFP, there's been a lot of talk about a new Big 12 mm -hmm. TV deal. And I know nothing official has been announced yet from the conference. What can you tell us uh, for K-State fans about the possibility of, of a new TV deal for the Big 12? Well, I think I've talked about it before. You know, Commissioner Yormark has made this kind of one of his number one priorities in terms of talking to our TV partners, Fox and ESPN. They're great partners. Uh, we clearly want to continue with those partners. We still want to continue with those partners. And I think Brett has felt very confident that where the conversations are going and I tell you what, I think uh, with his knowledge and his connections in the media world, I think we're going to be in a good spot. From that, we'll pivot into our first question from the fans. And this one is from at Purple Pride, or I guess it's Purple Pride. It's at P Pride 1 on Twitter. How do the TV partners make decisions for channel, game time, and any other considerations they use to make TV <laughs> decisions? This question gets asked a lot. You actually probably know better than I do because <laughs> it's actually in the TV contract and it's all based on priority and, you know, who's got first pick and, and, and you know, some weeks ESPN has the first spot, some weeks Fox has the first spot, um, and sometimes it rotates and through, like Fox may have the first, ESPN may have the first two selections in Fox. It's all a matter of priority. It's actually, you know, something that's, like I said, in the TV contract. We have no control over it. The only thing we have control over is if it's a ESPN Plus game, we get to select the game time. Other than that, we wait until everybody else and it gets announced and we know what time we're playing. 
That's right. And the decisions made by those TV partners are they don't inform us of the how how uh, the reasons why. Right. Right. They right. just say, we don't know why. Yeah. Here's the time you're playing. They don't. We can assume, I guess, apparently, right. but we don't know the exact reason. Why. You win more, you get you're on bigger platforms. Yeah. That's kind of how it works. Yeah. All right. Football is playing well. Uh, your thoughts and take on the season to this point? Well, they really are. And what I've enjoyed and just listening to Chris talk about the culture in the locker room and how much these guys have come together and they really want to win for each other and there's a lot of some great individual performances as we've seen but it feels like the individuals don't care about their individual performances they care about winning and i think even deuce said that it's something about i could care less about how many yards i just want to put ourselves in a position but uh, you know saturday against oklahoma state um, and chris probably said this is that was probably one of the best complete games that i've seen a team play and we're going to need to do that here on out because as you know the big 12 is unbelievably difficult and every week's a new week and we just have to be ready but it's fun to watch this team play football it really is it's certainly especially the whole idea of it doesn't matter who gets the credit let's just go out and get it done and Um, the crowds have helped a tremendous amount our crowds have been awesome and we appreciate that sold out the whole season that streak continues well it's uh, i think it's at seven or nine straight by the end of the season now going back to last season hopefully that continues for a while here as well speaking of the fans another question from our our fans from twitter has anything been done about the treatment of our team on the road <laughs> batteries and beer thrown has gene brought this up to other ad's and or the big 12 that's from at lunchbox underscore 77 yeah, you know, obviously that's, you know, disappointing. And, and every fans, everywhere you go, uh, you have potentially some issues. Obviously, go to Texas Tech, you get pelted with tortillas. Um, you know, but it's usually a conversation I'll have with the AD. And the AD will call me if they were uh, aware of a situation. We'll have the conversation. I'll give them my opinion, and then it's up to them to address it. If it's really bad, obviously, you know, field stormings, the conference takes a look at those. Obviously, there have been some schools fined. After our game this past weekend, we did not get fined, but they did take a look at it. So it's it's really about mutual respect and then just trying to make sure you're up front with the opposing AD and say, hey, this is what happened. This is how I view it. These are something. These are some things you need to be aware of. And usually they get back and say, hey, we'll address it and, and go from there. Speaking of the fans, uh, one question as we pivot to basketball, with basketball now beginning, is from a student, I'm assuming, that says from Twitter, now that things have changed in the student section at football games, <laughs> will Sandstorm make a comeback this year? This is from at Hey, it's Logan J. Well, that's a great question. And I know that's something uh, Coach Tang has talked about. Uh, he's actually addressed it with the students. He'd love to see Sandstorm come back. We know what uh, the issue is. And so far with or Wabash, they've they've done the good thing and they've 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 uh, cheered KSU, which is a, a positive, and we appreciate that very much. And so, you know, as we get into basketball season and we feel that uh, we can play Sandstorm and the same result as KSU, then uh, you might uh, get a chance to hear Sandstorm. Season tickets, by the way, f- still available for both men's, women's, and women's basketball as those two teams crank up their season. Men's basketball season tickets uh, now 10,200, I think, yeah, uh, I believe that's counting what students I saw. as yeah. well. Man, it's uh, fantastic. Yeah. Women's basketball way up as well, uh, getting into their into their season. By the way, speaking of basketball, this question from Facebook from Darren Kappelman. Why do we not sell Call Hall ice cream at games? I included this question because we can answer this question. <laughs> we even have a specific section as to where it's at. That's right. We do sell <laughs> call hall ice cream at games now at sections 3 and 17. Uh, section set, uh, 3 for men's games, 17 for both men's and women's. Also, concession items include beef ultimate nachos. These are new ones this year. Fried cheese curds and carne asada loaded fry. Any of those sound good? Now, we're taping this in the morning, so I'm not sure any of those sound yeah, good. Yeah, not the moment, too but. much right now, but maybe around lunchtime or, you know, first game, I have to walk around and see some, um, you know, see some of these concession items. Basketball, as they get cranked up, obviously the women, it's disappointing to not have Aoka yeah, Lee, yeah. but for the men, the excitement is, is at an all time high for Jerome Tang, and we saw them in their first game. Great student response. Your take on, on what we see this year? Yeah, you know, I haven't chan- I have not had a chance to see the women play. I know I'll get a chance this week. Um, and clearly, you know, some of the things that were positive is our athleticism uh, on the men's side. They play really hard. Uh, you know, obviously, I'm sure Coach Tang is, was re- rotating groups to just try to see who mixed together pretty well. Obviously, a lot of turnovers. But I think a lot of energy right now with the way this team played in the exhibition game, the energy, their passion, their athletic ability, their ability to rebound and get after each other. So 
We'll see. Hopefully, as the season gets along, they'll be able to correct some of the stuff. And a lot of a lot of energy and excitement right now. Yeah, no doubt. And about both programs and, and the fans too. I mean, yeah. the, the, both the new seating that's down on the court it's all filled up for both games. Yeah. Right to see it in the exhibition yeah. side. A lot of good stuff. As we wrap things up, NIL. We didn't get to talk much NIL on this show uh, from time to time just because we run yeah. out of time. But this one we get in, it's from Twitter. It's from at Joe Bagley 90. He says, hey, with NIL, can you as fans donate to a specific player or is that against the rules? Well, it's, it's beginning to, I guess, loosen is the right word. Uh, we have two collectives uh, that work with us, uh, Wildcat NIL and Wildcat Den. You can go on our website and look and see how to get in touch with those collectives and then it's up to the fans to reach out to them and find out what options they have uh, and, and see how the best way to be a participant as a fan in, 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 in NIL. It's important obviously for all programs and, and there are a lot of options I think for fans to get involved but I, the best way is to reach out to either one of those collectives and see what programs they have and what's available uh, for them to, to get involved with uh, supporting our student athletes. You can go to kstatesports.com, as Gene mentioned, to see that. Just hit the drop-down menu. It's right there. It says name, image, and likeness. Click on that. You can also go through the 800fund.com website. They also have links and questions. And then FAQs, all sorts of stuff, all sorts of information. It's changing a lot every day. We'll keep it updated (laughs) as much as we can. Appreciate the time. Thanks. I know you're busy flying in and out, going to the CFP, (laughs) watching football games, basketball. It's a fun time. It's a busy time. But thanks for doing this. Thanks. Appreciate it. uh, Fans keep bringing the energy. We really, uh, really appreciate it. It makes a difference. And no doubt. Texas this weekend. Hope to see everybody here on what will be a blustery but fun day and fun in the sunshine against the Longhorns. For Gene Taylor, for producer and director Preston Kerner, I'm Brian Smoller. Thank you for watching Ask the AD.